All right, so I was originally planning on making a video about AI and how people are using AI and ask the more edgy question of, you know, is AI better than the reviewers? So the more clever and edgy outcome I was going for here was that yes, these AI platforms are better than what you get from reviewers, provided that you give it the right prompt. But then I started giving these platforms the more nuanced prompts that I thought would yield better results and found that some of the results that I'm getting here are just weird. So that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. <laughs> So I started this off by taking a look at ChatGPT and just giving it a prompt of, you know, what are the best open back headphones under $500, right? Basic question. I think most people would be asking who are using these platforms. It's a reasonable thing to ask. Some of these results are good and some of them are less good. Um, but it's when you get into the specifics that things get more weird, which was kind of surprising to me. So what you're getting from these, these are all pulling information from various different sources. So they might be, you know, websites that are reviewing the products. They might be forums and various different audio communities that are talking about these things. And one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of what gets pulled here is based around where a lot of noise is being made about a given headphone for one reason or another. And I think the general outcome here is that a lot of the results that you get here are gonna be online community discourse driven, and this can lead to some kind of strange results. Like I was getting results on certain platforms that were just really out of date. And I think, you know, this one here is showing the K7XX. Like I, I don't know that that's that relevant today. So then I thought, what if I make the prompt more specific? So I asked, what are the best open back headphones under $500 for music listening? And it gave me some results, different results. It gave me the HD 600 from Sennheiser and HD 660S. I can see the argument for the HD 600, the 660S less so, but okay, fine. Then there's the Odyssey LCD one. I don't even know if like, are they still making this headphone? Can you still buy this? I am unable to find a store that sells this. Maybe there's still some that are available, but I believe this is not even a, a current product. Uh, so that's one thing. Then also the Bayer Dynamic DT 1990 Pro. Uh, this is a headphone that is particularly harsh sounding. It has a massive resonance at around eight to 8.5 kilohertz and then another one at 12 kilohertz. This was a popular model at one point, like years ago. And personally, I'd like to think that I've been fairly consistent on this one. The first time I heard this, this was actually one of the first headphones that I reviewed. I hated it from day one. <laughs> I thought it was totally horrible. Then there's the hi Man HE400SE and Sundara. There's the Meze 105 AER, which is a weird one, and we'll get to that in a moment. And then there's, of course, the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pro. And then there's another AKG model in there, too. So, yes, the DT990 Pro is very bright, but it is a headphone that has a lot of commentary about it online. And, uh, and so, you know, it's kind of unsurprising to me that it makes this list. So then I thought, okay, well, what if we go even further and start qualifying these a little bit more? And so I asked it, what are the best open back headphones under $500 for smooth treble and an even spectral balance? You know, these are the kinds of things that like I might look for in a headphone. So it's getting, the prompt is getting more nuanced now. And the results here, we get the Sennheiser HD 600, 650 and 660S. Again, that's not unreasonable to include that. And then you get the Focal Listen Professional. And like, that is a headphone that I believe you can buy, but I'm, I'm very confused as to why that gets included in this list next to Sundar. Let me just, let me just take a look at that. Let's look at the frequency response of the Focal Listen Professional. Um, and it is uh, kind of weird. Let's just put it bluntly. Definitely one of the weirder ones on this list. And then the open back alternative Focal Clear P series underused. And those are very different headphones. So that's one area where ChatGPT at least is a bit confused. Then there's a Sundara on there. That's understandable. K712 Pro, uh, K702. I, I believe I have a K712 Pro here. It's not a good headphone. Let me just be very clear about that. That it's a really weird sound. And it's very unfortunate that they use that as the replicator headphone in the Harman work, but that's a, a different topic. And then we get the Fidelio X2 HR. The prompt here was smooth treble and even spectral balance. So I would say that, you know, HD 600 and 650, they achieve that. Sundara sort of achieves that. I wouldn't necessarily say smooth treble, uh, but that's the description that it gives. And then Philips Fidelio X2 HR, the, the, treble was specifically not smooth, right? That, that was kind of the problem with that headphone. So I'm not exactly surprised by like the overall kind of, you know, bucket of results that we get here. It's more that I'm surprised by what it's attached, you know, some of these subjective qualifiers to. You know, I've asked it for smooth treble and an even spectral balance, and it's given me products that 
have harsh treble and a wonky frequency response. <laughs> uh, but let's now move over to one of the other platforms here. And this was another result where I basically prompted it for the same thing. This is, I'm using perplexity now. And I asked it the same question, uh, you know, were the best open back headphones under $500 for smooth treble and an even spectral balance? And again, I get the HD 600 and 650. I get the Sundara. Then I get the Meze 105 AER. And it's, it's saying the Meze 105 AER is known for natural warm tonality with smooth highs and an overall even spectral balance. No, it is not. Now, I'm not saying that nobody is gonna hear it this way or even that there aren't things to like about this headphone. It's, you know, these things behave differently on different heads and this is a subjective hobby after all. It's just that the nature of these subjective reports is not well understood by the AI here. See, it's not that the AI has failed, it's that somebody else has failed the AI and now it is feasting on that failure and providing it to all of you. Some of the general truisms about how people should use AI platforms, you know, for their purchase decisions, that applies to headphones. It does depend on the prompt and it does depend on what it's able to feast on. But I was genuinely expecting that the more nuanced my prompt got, the better the results would be. And some of the results here are like, the, it's like the opposite of what the prompt is, which is kind of a weird thing. So then I started to go a little bit further and try to figure out, okay, how does it do for answering some questions about things like what is acoustic competence? Like some of the more technical deep dive questions, like what is an HRTF, all those types of questions. And, uh, and it gave good answers for these questions as long as I was specific with it. Uh, let me just double check what perplexity says, cause I didn't actually do that. What is a diffuse field? Let's just see what it says for that. So yeah, basically this gives a reasonable answer. A uh, uniform sound distribution, the sound pressure level is essentially the same everywhere in the room. So this is something where it is pulled from a source. It's pulled from Wikipedia here, actually. Uh, and then it also shows a couple of other sources. And actually looking at this, I, did we make this? We did. Yeah, so the diffuse field prompt is getting its information from listener's article up on headphones.com. Uh, I'll leave this linked in the description for anybody who's, who's interested. But um, yeah, this also seems like a reasonable segue to our sponsor, headphones.com, who makes all these videos possible. You can find the actual source of this information and other technical deep dives up on headphones.com on the audio files section there. Um, and as always, if you want to support what we do here on this channel, uh, make sure you consider headphones.com the next time you're in the market for a new pair of headphones. But shameless plugs aside, let's move on. So some of these more technical questions it is able to give uh, reasonable answers to, which I thought was good. Uh, but then I started to ask some questions about like, you know, whether or not cables would make a difference. And this is where things got weird again. I started to get recommendations for cables that would make the sound warmer. <laughs> and so what the AI would do is it would hedge against its own recommendations by saying, this is what people report, or this is how people perceive it to be. And then it would say, you know, it would give whatever recommendation for a certain type of cable to make it warmer, right? And people were asking, like even on Head5, they're asking ChatGPT what cables it would recommend to be paired with, you know, specific equipment that they had. And um, so then I started to kind of try that out and found that, yeah, like if you ask, you know, what audio cables make uh, your audio system warmer, you know, it, it actually gives you answers to this, even though they're, they're bogus, right? Like there's there's no there there. They're not, there's nothing that's actually been demonstrated um, that it can latch onto. So it is pulling from the sea of madness that exists where people are reporting these differences. And the caveat there for these AI platforms is that it, the language it starts to use shifts a little bit to people perceive whatever it is, right? Rather than saying, hey, this is how it is. And this is where you and I and other AI platform users need to be a little bit careful about what it is that we're reading and the conclusions that we're drawing from it. Like I was able to get it to recommend to me audiophile crystals and their best use case and use application. You know, one of them was to, you know, leave certain types of audiophile crystals near cables to get the sound to change in a certain way. So if you're feeding it those kinds of prompts, again, it's going to give you the craziness, right? Like it's going to see, okay, well, who's talking about crystals online about this? What are they talking about uh, with respect to this? And let me see if I can, you know, concisify that. So again, the outcome here is that unfortunately, no, AI is just not good enough yet to be able to distinguish uh, good information from bad. And that's true generally, you know, across all domains, really. But particularly when it comes to something like the audio space or the headphone space, where it's a topic that involves a high degree of suggestibility of placebo of confirmation bias of subjectiveness generally where it's prone to be particularly confused 
about some of these results because it's pulling from what people are saying about this. And so for that reason, I really want to encourage people to stop using AI answers as proofs for something that they are trying to communicate, right? So one of the recent ones that I saw was uh, was on HeadFi where somebody asked ChatGPT, can the sound of a track be exhaustively captured or represented by a frequency response graph alone? Um, and then the answer was no. It goes into time domain behavior, phase response, distortion characteristics, dynamic and compression, spatial and psychoacoustic elements, etc. cetera. Um, and the thing is, there is a sense in which some of these can be true in a technical sense. It's just that they are not relevant or don't apply in the context of headphones. And they are bound to lead people to more confusion than they are to clarify that information, especially because of the way that people are making use of these answers or allowing them to sort of permeate their belief systems on all of this stuff, right? So let's take a look at this one. So the number one thing here it says is time domain behavior. So if you do a sweep, you also get the time domain behavior. And in headphones, uh, time domain is proportional to frequency response most of the time in the vast majority of cases. And so therefore it doesn't actually show you anything new that frequency response doesn't also show you. And the big problem here is that it uses language like attack, decay, sustain, release, transient response, smearing or ringing. These are, these are terms that also have a subjective application to them. And when people are reading this stuff, they are bound to apply those same subjective descriptions to a separate category of evaluation that this is seeming to indicate, right? When in reality, this is just frequency response, just again, seen a different way. Phase response, this is something that actually is captured by frequency response, it's just not visualized in it typically. It's not what the graphs typically show, but that is part of, that's, that's what frequency response contains. Um, distortion characteristics, again, another one where it's like, it's true, distortion is not a thing that is shown by frequency response and it is a component of, of the sound that could be potentially heard. But in most cases, it's not really that relevant. Like, unless it's really bad, you probably won't hear it. And now the next one, dynamics and compression. Again, this is, these are terms that are laden with subjective ease. Uh, when there is a technical truth available, dynamics and compression, like th these are real things. But this carries with it a lot of subjective semantics that people are going to take from this kind of information. And you know, same thing with timbre and texture. These are subjective terms that often get used to describe the sound. But the thing is, those are things that are absolutely captured in frequency response, and you can even predict how they will be received for things like timbre and texture. Um, it's just that the analysis of frequency response needs to be sufficiently good in order to do that. People are usually just analyzing frequency response in terms of the most basic, you know, what is the relationship between bass mids and treble when there's so much more contained within it. It's not just how it is relative to a target. And so once we start to analyze it in a more thorough manner, a lot of these things, a lot of the subjective language that gets used, that this is being shown as proof of like something else, you're actually able to connect the dots better between that stuff and frequency response. So, you know, the spirit of this post and these questions is a reasonable one. I don't actually think there's anything wrong with people asking these questions and even going to AI platforms to do this, but um, it's important to recognize that there's a lot of context missing here and a lot of the relevance for headphones that people are misattributing. This kind of stuff is bound to lead to more confusion and misinformation spreading than it is cl the clarifying of information, which is what I think the intention is behind this. Really, we have to stop using the results that we get from AI platforms as proofs for anything because all it's really saying is, look at how many other people are also confused about this. You know, this is not an indication of signal that, hey, this is, th there's some truth here to, to be uncovered. This is signal that, hey, people are talking about this or people think this or people believe this. And that is a separate thing from facts. <laughs> so be very careful when using AI platforms. And with much sadness, I have to actually recommend against doing that for the most part, unless you are very cautious in your approach. And that's gonna do it for this video. But if you guys have any perspectives on AI uh, as it relates to the headphone information space, um, I've actually opened a forum thread on our forum and I'll leave that linked in the description. So feel free to comment there, give your opinions, or if you just found some fun, you know, hallucinations, because they, they are prone to hallucinating from time to time, um, maybe more so in our space. But as always, if you'd like to chat with me or other like-minded audio folks, you can do so in a Discord also linked below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.